When we talk about indirect rays, I'm talking about light that bounces around in the scene. So if light hits the terrain and bounces up and lights up the smoke, that would be considered a diffused indirect sample. And we could figure out how many times it bounces around by going to our karma settings under the limits tab. So if you don't want any light bouncing around, like what we have right here, you would set all of this down to zero. Now the two main things that we want to concern ourselves with is the diffuse limits. That again is going to be the light that bounces off the terrain and lights up our smoke, as well as the volume limits, which allows light to bounce around within the medium, within the smoke. So if the limits is how many times light is allowed to bounce around, the next question is how do you determine how often or how many samples we go through when trying to figure that calculation out. So on the sampling tab here, if I set this to path trace, the very first option, what I'm saying is that when a pixel sample goes through a pixel, it discovers a volume, it's reading off the vo voxel value, and again, we're reading off every single voxel value right here. It's going to create an indirect sample for the volume. So in other words, it's going to look at this volume limit, say, okay, bounce one time, figure out that value, and then move on to the next voxel. When we turn up the number of samples here, the, the number of indirect samples, so if we go to distributed right here, and we say that I want two volume samples, what that's saying is that, okay, we go to a voxel, we, again, only bounce once to find the indirect contribution. But then, because we have two samples, we do that again. So it's bouncing once, two times. If I change this to four, it's saying bounce once, four times for that voxel value for that voxel contribution, or ultimately for the pixel samples. So that's why it takes so long to calculate these indirect rays. We're literally going through every single voxel, and we are sending off an indirect ray a certain number of times. Here's what it looks like when we have one indirect sample with one bounce on the volume. There's no diffuse bounces, this is just the volume. We have a lot of grain that we introduced in the process, and our render time doubled at 10 minutes, 25 seconds. So we used to be at about five minutes, that now went to 10 with just one bounce and one sample. And this is why your renders take forever, <laughs> if you want a clean result. In my opinion, having volume samples bounce around, the indirect volume samples bounce around, and have everything glow more is a cool look, but you'll need to also compensate your shading for it because now it's too glowy. And on top of that, it again, just adds a ton of render time. So if you have the time to render it out this way, I think that if you dial in the shader settings, this can be a really cool way of adding interesting detail to everything, but it comes at a pretty high cost. You also lose out on contrast. And so if we take a look at this, in my opinion, this looks way cooler than having this super glowy cloud right now. We can fix that through increasing shadow density and adding more density in general. But it just goes to show that uh, you still can get a pretty cool look at a fraction of the render time. Again, this took two minutes, 24 seconds versus this, which took 10 minutes. So I'm going to go through a couple of exercises to show you what this all does. Let's start off by seeing what happens when we turn up the shadow density, the density, and adding an additional bounce. So we'll bounce around two times. And after compensating with the shader and adding one more bounce, adding a little bit more on that shadow intensity, we end up with this. 
Our grain problem has gotten much worse and somehow we reduced the render time to seven and a half minutes. I'm not sure how that happened, but here nor there, <laughs> that's what happened. What if we go crazy on this and we keep the samples at one and we turn up our limits. So the number of times we bounce around all the way up to 10 and we restart this. What does that give us? Well, now we're really starting to glow this thing out. I mean, it's so glowy that it doesn't look like anything that you would actually see in the real world. <laughs> uh, but it only added one minute to our render time. So what that tells us is that it's not the limits that really add a lot of render time. It's the number of samples that you decide to go with. Just for fun, what happens when we turn this up to a value of 50? You would probably never want to do that, but just out of curiosity, what happens then? And as we can see, all we're really doing here is blowing it out. So that was before, again, about eight minutes. This is about eight and a half. We're almost done here. So it really didn't have much impact on the render time. It added maybe about a minute or two, but that's 50 bounces. So it's quite a bit. Um, so, what this means is that by adding more bounces, you're not necessarily getting more quality. You're just making the effect more pronounced. And so when setting the limits, don't think of it as trying to increase the quality and decrease grain. That's not how it works. Think of it as you're trying to make that indirect contribution brighter. And sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes that's a bad thing. Obviously, this is bad because we're just losing all of our detail. And uh, so, anyway, let's bring this back down to what might be more practical real fast. Volume limit, let's set this to a value of two. I think two might be a good value. And then on the sampling, what happens when we turn this from one sample to two samples? So this is the render when we had one sample, one bounce. And this is now the render we have with two samples and two bounces. Because we have two bounces, the noise got brighter. So that's one thing. We've also increased our render time now to about 12 minutes. So that added around two minutes of time. And one thing to note here is that the more bounces you have, the brighter the grain gets and the more contrast you'll have between that grain and the darker areas behind it. And so not really behind it, but next to it, I should say. Uh, so what that means is that if you add more bounces, you need more samples because of the fact that the grain you're getting is brighter and is more pronounced. So if it was me in this situation and I wanted a little bit of this glow effect, what I'd probably do is I'd go to our volume samples here. I turn that to four. I go to our limits. I would turn that to one and let's see what this does. So here we are. We're now at 13 and a half minutes compared to about 12. So this is two bounces, two samples. This is four samples, one bounce and we still have a bunch of grain. And so my recommendation, just to really emphasize this, if you're going to do indirect lighting, which I actually don't recommend with Karma, but if you do, <laughs> uh, be sure that you go for only one or two bounces because the noise here is already hard to get rid of as it is. And we've already added a lot of render time to what we would have if there was no indirect lighting. Uh, so I'm going to now turn this to eight volume samples and let's see what that does. All right, and at eight indirect samples, we now have this at 22 minutes. It's still grainy, much better than what we had before at 13 minutes, but we're just getting way too high in our render times. I mean, if we take a quick calculation at how long this is going to take, let me just pull this aside real fast. Yeah, so this was 22 minutes. 
times, let's say 10 seconds, 300 frames. That's how many minutes. That's how many hours. And if I kept my computer running 24 seven, that would be about four and a half days to get through. And again, this is not a clean image. We need more than this. So probably the actual render time might be around a half hour, maybe 40 minutes to get something that's clean. And that's just not realistic. That's not something that you ever want to aim for when you're trying to render things out. Most likely if somebody hired you, they hired you at the end of a production where you don't have time to render things out for 40 minutes. And to be honest with you, I still think that the original look we had with this looks way better anyways. I mean, this has more contrast. We can see more of the detail. This took two and a half minutes versus this, which is again, 10 times that render time. Uh, so hopefully this brief tour has shown you guys what some of these settings do. Kind of gives you an idea of what's going on with Karma in terms of the indirect samples. When XPU can support alphas, that'll be great. And when it supports motion blur, when it supports all the indirect bouncing for volume limits, this stuff might matter less and less um, when it comes to the render time because XPU is really fast. But for the time being, it's just not in the cards. So I'm going to render everything out with no indirect rays. And in the next video, I'd like to move on to comp.